In light of a recent event where someone bought some naughty photos on Reddit believing they were a real female only to discover they were an AI generated character, I offer my deepest condolences to them for being the first person to fall for this and being clowned on by the entire internet. Fake images have been a very hot topic these days, even Nat Geo posted about which of these animals are professionally taken and artificially generated. These photorealistic AI images like the Pope's latest strip probably already reached far and wide into the world because of how convincing they are. And now, videos are following a similar trajectory. Previously, we have gone over a few interesting text video AIs with some generating very goofy stuff and others that go down the uncanny valley. But today, I have some truly jaw-dropping creations people have made through a lot of sweaty GPU work that I want to share with you. Like today's sponsor, Opera GX, the browser optimally designed for gamers. You know what gamers and AI enthusiasts have in common? Is that we are not really keen on sharing our computational resources to other softwares. With Opera GX, GX, you can not only easily manage computational usage, but also experience their newest feature, generative AI integration that lets you access ChatGPT or ChatSonic in the sidebar. With this, if you ever encounter a newly published Chinese model like Modelscope's text-to-video and it's not in English, you can just highlight the text and have ChatGPT to translate it for you. Or if you're like me, an average Toy XYZ fanboy and wants to read the Japanese articles that he retweets, you can just highlight the text, translate with Opera GX embedded ChatGPT function, and it will translate it easily for you. And translate Translation is only one out of many options for you to select, like you can also generate a hype reaction for this tweet to share with your friends. Additionally, Opera GX also has a customizable sidebar, so you can add Twitter there to fill up your daily needs of tech updates and brain dead comments in just a simple click. Other apps like Discord, Spotify, or even TikTok all can be embedded in Opera GX, literally an all-in-one browser. You don't even need to worry about converting to Opera GX too, since Opera GX is also equipped with an import tool that allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browser to Opera GX. Browsing history, bookmarks, and cookies, you are 100% keeping them all. It's also compatible with every Google Chrome extension, which is just a chef kiss. So get started right now using my link below to download Opera GX today. And thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. But anyways, have you seen a workflow that looks this long? Text to video, or more specifically, video style transfer, are at the stage where people are taking whatever tools they can find in order to produce high quality AI generated video that looks this good. When stable diffusion can generate images that are this realistic, some people began to explore the possibility of using image generations to generate videos, or at least transfer the generated image style onto a video. But the difficulty increases as each of the video frames that the AI referenced and regenerated would not be coherent. So a lot of alternative ways are being used or experimented by everyone around the world. This is the beauty of open source by the way. There are a few simple solutions like the temporal net and the grid method which I mentioned a few videos ago to fix the incoherent issues. Check it out if you haven't. However, there are even more methods to create better resulting videos. And some are external workarounds like interpolation and deflickering and some are refining the inputs even more to guarantee better results like segmenting the character out of the video with other AI research to constrain the input or using taggers to create better tags that was trained in the model. And this text talk actually bothered me for quite a while. The clip was posted by itself a few days ago, and while it looks 100% AI generated because the background flickers, it raised the question of why the face is so coherent and the implication of future content creation business. I actually couldn't find a source to confirm how they had done it, but it probably was achieved with control net image to image multi-frame processing. But a few days later, the original video was found and you could see the low bit rate helped to hide a lot of inconsistencies like the necklace, wrist raise, and even the hand. Traces of image to image are very obvious, but the face is nearly indiscernible to see the inconsistencies. With an AI face that looks extremely real and frankly very attractive to most people, it has the power to change the landscape or even oversaturate the influencer or model businesses, if beauty or looks are the main selling point of course. But some of you might say these fake AI faces are just filters with extra steps. There are already a lot of influencers that use heavy filters to make themselves look attractive. Well, that's a fair argument, but these AI faces can be generated with a lot of diversities, customizations, and those pre-made filters are pre-programmed and will be extremely hard to customize. And we have only just scratched the surface of what these type of AIs is capable of doing because making someone look more attractive is not its only function. It is much more generalizable. You can make it on sceneries, you can make it on animals, people just put it on humans right now because that is one of the hardest thing to achieve. This Hatsune Miku generation workflow has changed how people generate AI videos for humanoids in the past few weeks. This is probably by far one of the best and the clearest guides out there so far to generate 
generate videos that are coherent with stable diffusion and have results that actually looks really good. The potential of making 3D animation looks like drawn in 2D is going to spark a revolution in the animation industry. And it can go even further as custom stable diffusion models have different art styles and realism. It makes video style transfer very easy to convert to different art styles or even photorealism very soon. Like this guy renewed the 3D graphics in an old game to make the character look extremely realistic by using Temporal Kit and some other control net models to transfer the style on top. Maybe there exists a future where people can remaster old games to make it much more playable and visually pleasant, who knows? And we can probably play Pepsi Man with RTX on very soon. Or this real life to animate TikTok, which uses a very similar workflow for making the Hatsune Miku style transfer with the addition of MOV to MOV, which is a Chinese extension for automatic 1111, and was able to restrain the hands and make it not disappear or grow an extra limb. MOV to MOV reduces all the manual processing you need when doing batch image to image generation for making videos by exporting frames from videos, segmenting humans, generating backgrounds for green screens, and combining everything back together into a video, which is pretty neat. This author also made another test where he tested out another clip of different dance moves, and to be honest, I don't know if I will still be able to monetize this video. The results video looks really good though, it's just way too interpolated. It shows a very good coherency that we were not capable of doing before. Cool tech, but nothing new. Honestly, kinda cringe. And the author replied, I spent a lot of time trying other things, but only dance videos matter to attract people's attention. Sometimes I find this quite confusing because traffic for technical content is much less. Well, sometimes what gets made is the result of what the environment wants. People like doing experiments on attractive females while demoing some really advanced technical content. It's not just because they like it, but also because it's the only way to get their work seen in order to popularize and push its improvements. On the other hand, someone actually did the opposite, converting anime back to real life. Well, technically half real. But yes, live action Cowboy Bebop was something I did not expect. Even though the face still looks a bit stiff and unusually attached, this is definitely a first in doing this and actually looks decent. The most interesting details are the face and the hands. These two are probably the most realistic parts and I'm surprised that the hands rarely grow 5 or more fingers. Wait, oh my god, did you see that? Wait, 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 let me go back again. What is that? Is that is that someone telling you to subscribe to ByCloud? But yeah, these Reddit and Twitter AI legends have only been making these videos like every two days because all of these processes require extreme patience to create, long time to render, and expensive GPUs like 490s to run. So this is still not a practical solution if you want to use it in a serious production like an anime. Never mind, they already did it. They just slapped an anime filter over the real life footage and drawn a face on top of this guy or some sort. I'm speechless. But anyways, a few more architectures down the line, we'll probably see these AI models haunting the normies on TikTok or Reels, and we'll just sit back and enjoy the panic that we have already experienced days before them. Thanks for watching. Big shout out to Andrew Lascellias, Chris Ledoux, Alex Maurice, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter for my latest shit posts, and I'll see you all in the next one.